2023. Man, it's amazing. I didn't. It's such a turnout this this uh, fan fest, man. It's been it's been great to see everybody and all the fans and celebrating the World Series. So hopefully, we get to do it again next year. Well, maybe we'll start with uh, the family side of things. You and your wife, and now your two kids. What's this off season been like for you? <laughs> We're in the trenches right now. I bet. <laughs> yeah, two kids under two is tough. Nobody, you know, I mean, nobody warned us really. Uh, but no, we're good. My, my wife's doing great. Um, kids are growing like weeds. So, man, just being a dad. Ryan Preston, closer for the Houston Astros, joining us on Sports Talk 790. I got to ask you, man, at any point in time during the playoffs last year, when your walkout music and the lights are going nuts, did you take a step, step back and say, "Damn, this is pretty cool"? <laughs> like, I mean, your your, your walkout song. And music and theatrics. and theatrics like made headway throughout the national media and through all kinds of different blogs and podcasts. People were all talking about it. Did you ever take a step back to just take it all in and be like, man, this is pretty damn cool? I did the very first time I went out and we saw the whole thing. And I said, you better soak it up because if you blow this save, we're going back to the normal <laughs> save. Yeah. So, um, you know, Shaq, one of our PR guys, is he, he was kind of in everybody's ear about it. You know, we, we, get, we saw Baltimore and obviously the Mets and. I was like, Shaq, I want to do something cool like that, you know? And then, say, oh, we don't, we don't have it yet, and brings it out first game of the postseason. And I was just like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> here, we, here we go. So hopefully, you know, everything went smoothly, and it was, it's a good time. So, yeah, I, I take a step back yeah. and look at it. It's, it's awesome. I mean, big, it was Big hat trip to Shaq on that. Yeah. Great yeah. to work with. Obviously, he's doing great things. And, like, maybe even after the fact, you're in the moment. You've got a job to do. You're walking out amidst all that, but like you said, you're going out there to finish out the game, get maybe even more than the three outs you, you got throughout the normal year. But then after the fact, your wife's on social media. You'll see it after the fact. Seeing it from like the videos of it, seeing some of that stuff, what do, what do you think of that? Noticing how the stadium is and these guys, the fans, are all soaking it in. Yeah, I mean, they'll definitely help me get pumped up for the inning. You know, I mean, once that song comes on, it's, you know, you try, you try to – contain as much adrenaline as you can because you don't want to be out there throwing the ball all over the place but my wife has showed me some videos that have been pretty cool um right when i'm coming out of the bullpen the lights and and all that stuff it's been a, a, a really neat experience i never thought i'd be you know given this opportunity and you know i just wanted to run with it and and see what i could do with it so it's it's been a really fun experience so i, I appreciate everybody who does it speaking of getting used a lot i think i counted there were 13 postseason games. You pitched in 10 of them. I mean, you didn't even get a break. You, I think you played more than some of the position guys in some of these games. Good. <laughs> good. That means we're in a good spot. You know, if if me, Abreu, and Montero are all in Hector, and if, er, if everybody's in that game, that means uh, we're doing something right. So, you know, being the guy at the very end, I just don't want to mess anything up. So being there at the end, when Castellanos hit the little flare up into to right field, into the foul territory, did you think Kyle Tucker could get there? Because he ran a long way to track that baseball down. He better have gotten there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I saw. I mean, I know how fast Tucker is. So right. He he should have gotten there, and I was going to wear him out if he didn't. Um, but uh, yeah, he once he got over there, and he, he had plenty of room. And I saw that ball go in his glove, man. It was just such a release of of stress, anxiety. You know, everything that you put into it to to get to that moment, and you never think that when you're a kid, you always dream about it in the backyard, but. When you're actually there, it's it's surreal, and and once it all ended, it was just a release of everything, man. And it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. So, what did that moment actually feel like? Can you even put it into words? Besides, man. I mean, you, you talked about the stress going away, sigh of relief, so to speak. But what did it actually feel like? Is there any kind of man, way to describe it? It's at home. The place is jam packed. Jordan hits the monster home run to dead center field. The crowd's going crazy. You guys should have known at that point you guys were going to take it. Yeah. I mean, you could feel the momentum shifting all the way back to you guys. Framber's pitching his ass off. I mean, there, I, I really can't explain it. Yeah. It's, it's one of those feelings that you just, you just have to be in that situation to experience it. And I can tell you, I, I couldn't feel anything, um, <laughs> you know. And, you know, I thank the good Lord up, up above and just was like, huh. Thank you for not letting me blow this thing, um, you know, and just, you know, and soak it up all with my teammates, yeah. you know, and just turning around and looking towards the dugout and you see everybody running towards you. It's, it's, man, I can't tell you how much of a feeling that is. I remember talking to you after the first game of the postseason, the walk-off with Jordan, and you were talking about the moment that it was, and, you know, you said, and I quote, and we're just lucky you didn't kill anybody with that shot. <laughs> and then to the end of the postseason, the very last game you win it, talk to Lance about this afterwards during the celebration, Hunter Brown, a few others, some guys that were out in the bullpen about his home run in that game. Lance said, 
Well, when he hit that, I said, we're going to be World Series champs. You're out in the bullpen. You've gone in front. It's into the later stages of the game. Is that when it's, I'm going to be out there tonight because this is what we're going to do tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think he was already trending in that situation anyways. Um, you know, during a postseason, as a reliever, there's there's really you got to have the mindset that you're not going to have any days off anyway. So you might as well just go out there and just try to get your body ready. Uh, to do whatever job they need you to do. And, you know, once Jordan hit that homer, honestly, it, it was a huge relief for me uh, because I was just, thankfully, it wasn't a run, one run lead or anything because, I mean, you make any kind of mistake, it could be over with. Um, but, you know, when Jordan hit that ball, it just, I think everybody in the stadium knew it. Everybody watching on TV knew it. It was, it was ours to go get. And when you get to go back out there this year, Rafael Montero was re signed. The rest of the group, your group out in the bullpen, all back and intact and really even individually Hector Neris has this pitch that's a wipeout pitch and Abreu's got two pitches you might have two maybe three pitches I don't know if you your additional pitch that uh, you and Christian worked on this past year might be even more of it how do you look at your bullpen from off of an unbelievable record-setting year to bringing the whole group back to try to do it again I mean I think the guys that we have in our bullpen too they, they just want to get better every single day um and i think that you know with the numbers that we put up in the postseason and how good we were all year i think everybody in our pen wants to build on that they want to be better than that you know we'll we sit there and look at we only gave up five runs in the postseason we'll let's give up one run next year or zero runs you know i mean that's the way these guys take the mound every single day they ask for the ball every single day um, you know, and to get all these guys back, it's a good, great group of guys, man. You know, I can't tell you how much being down in the bullpen, you, you, you share a common thing of getting worn out by the fans, especially in other ballparks, um, especially it's definitely during the postseason, too. So we all sit down there and wear it with you. So I think our pact is, is a little bit more tight knit than a lot of other people. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're getting all those guys back. It's going to be another fun year. All that postseason winning you did, talking with Ryan Presley here on Sports Talk 790, you only had one game, although it lasted two games in Seattle. And then you had two games in New York, and then you had three games in Philadelphia. What were those three road postseason experience like out in the bullpen? Yeah, um, Seattle was definitely the loudest place that we played, I thought. Um, you know, Philly... We already know what Philly's going to do. They're just mean people in general. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you tough, already, tough place up there. Yeah, you already know what you're going into. And same, you know, we've we've beaten New York a handful of times up in New York too. So we already know what to expect. Uh, it just surprised me with, you know, Seattle and how loud they were. And those fans have been waiting for 20 years to finally be in the postseason. And it was a really cool experience, man. You know, I've always been to that stadium and sat in the bullpen. And you look out and you're like, God, this place would be so cool if it would just sell out. And I finally got to see that. And it was. It was worth it, man. It was loud. Yeah, so you got pitchers and catchers reporting here pretty soon. Spring training. But before that, you're playing for the United States of America in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. How's that going to be? I mean, have you already started ramping it up for uh, for that? I, I mean, have. Yeah. What's the offseason been like? I guess you get out of the World Series in November, take a couple months. Um, did you get to – let me ask you first. Did you get to hunt at all? I went one time. One time, that's yeah. it. Come on, man. Yeah. Those are rookie numbers. I know. I we got to get those numbers up, Ryan. I, I, I tried, man. Two yeah. kids, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. But, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I ramped it up a little bit earlier this year. Um, you know, I'll be throwing live VPs here shortly. Um, I'm, I'm ready to go, man. It's Arm feels great. You know, minus being the a short off season, you know, I'm I'm kind of glad that it was short because we get to play baseball soon. Oh, and he gets to pitch against Jose Altuve. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been talking a lot of stuff. Has in, he in, in the weight room? Talking some noise. You think he's nice, but he's not. He'll <laughs> right. He'll he'll <laughs> settle a little jazz, man. He'll he'll annoy you. Well, what, one of the cool things you got to do in the off season. This was where I I can't relate to you as a pro athlete because I'm not that. But I can relate to you that your wife is a Bravo fan, and you got to go up there. Was <laughs> bartender? It, yeah, you you were the bartender. That was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, um, you know, on Andy Cohen late live, it was you know my wife, you know, forced me to go do it. <laughs> you know, I was gonna, I was supposed to get as, um, unlimited hunting trips, and I only got to go one time. Happy so. wife, happy life, yeah, man. Yeah, man, she <laughs> she's a great salesman. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it was a fun experience. You know, um, she loves watching that kind of stuff, and you know, we just do you watch it with her or? Yeah, every once in a while, I'll oh, sit man. down and watch it. You know, I, you know, I got nothing else to do besides <laughs> making sure the kids are are not going to go run out in the street or anything. So, other than that, we just do hang we, out at the house. Do we need a Real Housewives of Houston? And will your wife? No, she be, won't be on it. Okay, <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, no, we've already set that straight. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. Have you seen the uh, Dominican Republic roster? I have. I have. It's a good lineup. It's, uh, they're pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, for you guys, of course. <laughs> yeah, they. Um, 
they got a pretty stacked lineup, but I mean, so do we. Yeah, right. Last thing on that, we, we've been talking about it for a couple weeks. We don't know the answer. You might not know the answer yet. What do you anticipate that as an impact to your preparation for the season? Yeah, I mean, they're going to be intense games right off the bat. Um, so, you know, it's just you know, listening to your body, making sure that, I mean, it's really just the main goal. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to play for Team USA and the WBC and represent your country, but the main goal is to, to get back to your teammates here and put, put up another World Series championship. And that's really all we want. You know, it's, it's going to be fun games to play and be a great experience, but main goal, like I said, is just to come back here healthy. And that's closer Ryan Presley. Y'all like Ryan Presley? That's going to do it, Ryan. We really appreciate the time, man. And good you. luck to you coming up with the uh, World Baseball Classic. Appreciate and pitch catch a report. Thank you. <laughs>